<laughs> hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and today I'm going to be showing you all how you can easily jailbreak your PS4 running firmware 5.05. So before we get into this, I want to answer a few basic questions that I do get asked quite a bit on here. First of all, this works on all versions of the PS4. The PS4 Original, the PS4 Slim, and the PS4 Pro. Yes, you have to be on firmware 5.05 to do this. There is a little discrepancy I'm going to talk about later on in the video, but for the most part it has to be firmware 5.05. If you're on firmware 5.50 or 6 point something or whatever it is, you cannot perform this same exploit here unless a new jailbreak comes out. No, you cannot downgrade your system either. If you're on a firmware that's too high, you cannot downgrade your system. The only way of doing this is to get a compatible system or to get a system that is on a firmware lower than 5.05 and update it. Finally, you cannot get online with this jailbreak. That is not what the developers of these jailbreaks intend, and on top of that, that's also why they are released on older, outdated firmwares where all this stuff is still available versus newer firmwares where they're supported online and these things might have been patched on there. So, for the most part, you're really never going to be able to get onto PlayStation Network with a jailbroken system because that is not the intent because you cannot get on with these old firmwares. So, with all that being said, getting into the tutorial, there will be a few things you need. First of all, you need a flash drive. You also need a compatible PlayStation 4 that has been updated to firmware 5.05, and you're also going to need a network connection. So an internal network connection and of course an internet connection as well too. And I'm going to be showing you all how you can do this all using a DNS server or how you can host it on your own computer and essentially turn that into a DNS server. So with that, let's go ahead and move over to our PC and I'll show you what we need and what we need to do to get everything set up. So first of all, you will need a flash drive for this. The flash drive is required for installing your package files, which will be the format your games or applications are in. So in order to install those, you are going to need a USB drive or a flash drive of some kind. I'm probably going to use those terms interchangeably and it needs to be formatted properly. Properly, meaning first of all, back up any files you care about on that, and second, you can go to right click, format, and it needs to be either XFAT or FAT32. I recommend using XFAT because this will work on the PS4 and it will work for files that are greater than 4 gigabytes in size. So for example, if you have a game that is 25 gigabytes and you need to copy it over, FAT32 will not work, but XFAT will work. So I'm going to format my flash drive real quick, and you can just press start. OK, and all that's done. There you go. Your flash drive is now ready for that. Second, we're going to need to download a few things. Now, let's say you're on a firmware that is lower, so let's say 4.05 or 4.55, something that is not supported on here, you have to update to 5.05. Down below in the description, there will be this link to Softpedia where you can download the 5.05 update file and you can apply it. And everything is here. It shows you where you can download the file, which will be down here, for example. And I got this file from here and it works. This is why I'm linking this. But anyways, it will show you all, you know, what you need to name it, the folder structure and putting it on your flash drive and how to apply it. This is quite simple to follow. It's easy enough to use. It's just updating your firmware. Now, there are two things I want to talk about. First of all is the firmware itself. If you are one of the rare people that has a system on 5.07, you said you heard that right 5.07 all of this will still work you don't need to worry about updating or downgrading or anything but 5.07 was a weird firmware that wasn't fully rolled out but everything here still works the kernel exploit works the webkit exploit works so the jailbreak will work just the same and you cannot apply it because there's no pup update file available for it so i just want to say this if there's a few people out there who are watching with 5.07 systems you can still follow this and everything will be just fine now for anybody who has done a previous jailbreak for example let's say you follow my 4.55 jailbreak tutorial and you now want to do the 5.05 jailbreak this is for you. I'm going to be showing you this part right here, which I'll need to go over to my PS4 to demonstrate. Let's say you're on firmware 4.55 and you have disabled updates before. What you need to do is you need to run the exploit here, get to your exploit page, and then you need to enable updates again prior to updating your system to 5.05. If you do not enable updates, you'll get an error every single time. 
As an added bonus, I've also seen a lot of people say, my PS4 downloaded an update already, and I'm afraid that it's going to apply that update. How can I get rid of that? Well, you can end up using these steps here to disable the update. So if you're on 4.55, for example, and you have an update downloaded and cached onto your system, you can come here, press disable updates, which will disable updates and delete the update data from your system, restart your console, and then go back in enable updates, and then install the update from your flash drive using 5.05. That's mainly for people that either have, of course, a update that's cached in that they're worried about, or they have disable updates already applied to their system, and they keep getting errors when trying to flash over 5.05. The next thing you need to download is PS4 Exploit Host by Al Azif. So all you need to do is go to the link down below in the description and download the latest release available. If you're on Windows like I am here, you need to download PS4 Exploit Host Win042. Just make sure you get the Win version. This will probably be updated at one point in the near future, so it could be 043 or 050, whatever it is. Download the Win version. Don't download the regular one if you're on Windows. So now that you have this downloaded, you need to right-click and extract here. As a forewarning, your antivirus might not like it because this is a web host client of some kind. It's okay, just whitelist it, it will be fine, trust me, because this is what everyone's been using here, and it's trustable. It just doesn't really play nicely with the antivirus sometimes because it's trying to host up a web server on your computer. But either way, you can just go in here, and this is using the first method, the DNS server. All you need is the readme file, which open this, and I encourage you all to download and actually look at this readme file because one, it's very well written, and two, these can change at a later update. So don't just copy the numbers that I have on screen because if you do that, they might not work in the future. But either way, what you need to do is come down to use remote DNS and go down to step one, and you need your primary DNS and your secondary DNS. Make sure you have these numbers available and easy enough to read, and we're going to put those into our network settings on our PS4 when we go over to that. So now that we have those on hand, that part is done, that's easy. The next thing we need to do is we need to copy over a package file or an application or a game, whatever it is. So grab whatever you want. I'm going to have this test package file available for download so you all can test this for the first time. But imagine this is a game or an application or whatever you want to install. Just imagine this is a game. You take the package file, go over to your flash drive that's been formatted, and paste it to the root of your flash drive. And that's it. So now that that is done, all you need to do is eject your flash drive, take it out, plug it into your PS4, and now we're going to do the rest of the stuff on our PS4. So now that we're over at the PS4, all you need to do is go up, go over to your settings, and we're now going to set up our network connection. So go to network and pick if you want to do wireless or wired. So you can go down to set up internet connection. I'm going to be doing a wired internet connection, so I'm going to use a LAN cable and I'm going to do custom. You have to do custom whichever one you pick. So automatic, do not specify, this is just me, but right here, this is the important part that you need. For your DNS settings, press manual, and then type in your primary and your secondary DNS. As you can see, I have already typed these right here, so I don't have to type them again, but primary, secondary, easy enough. Press next. Automatic, do not use, and test your internet connection. Your IP address should be successful, your internet connection will fail, that is to be expected, but now you can press the PlayStation button, go back up to your settings, go all the way up to user's guide, user's guide again, and now this page should come up. So you can press 5.05, press Mira, and wait a few seconds. And an error like this might come up, just press OK. And when it says you're all set, that's it, you're all set. So now you can press the PlayStation button, go over to settings, go all the way down to debug settings, which was not here before, go to game, package installer, and this is where all of your package files are going to be. So you could have one, you could have 20, whatever it might be, but either way, you can just press X right here. It's going to install your game, in this case, our test application. Press the PlayStation button, and as you can see, test app now shows up. So I can press the X button here, and as you can see, 
test application works. So that's about all we needed to do on that. In addition to that, the Mira payload there also activates our internet browser, it blocks updates, and it also installs on top of Homebrew Enabler, which is what we needed. It also installs the Mira framework as well too. One thing you need to know is this is not a permanent jailbreak, meaning every time we turn off and turn on our system, we have to run this again. If you're bringing your system out of sleep mode, it will still be jailbroken. But if you restart your system or you actually power it off, like if you pick turn off PS4 or restart your PS4, you have to do that process all over again in order for it to apply. I also want to explain all of these settings as well too. So you can go here, go over here, and blocker, this is your update blocker. Dumper, this is how to dump your games that are on disk or either installed on your system. I have a guide on that if you're interested at all. FTP is to enable FTP access to your system. Linux Loader is, of course, a Linux loader for PS4, and Mira is essentially the jailbreak that we need right there. So that's just kind of explaining everything in a nutshell. Now, this is quite easy to do, thankfully, but there are good and bad things to this the using the external DNS server. First of all, it's easy. Second, it's convenient. The downsides are you're at the will of the server owner, so that means they can change anything whenever they want to. They can add things, they can remove things, they can take down the server. You might have issues connecting to the server and that's really all on you at that point because you don't have any control on that so you can either pick another DNS server or you can host your own DNS server which is what I'm going to be showing you all next so both of these methods have positives and negatives I prefer to do the self-hosted method because on top of that maybe you're just the type of person you might not want to send out your console information to a random DNS server somewhere and that's totally fine as well too and for that I'm going to show you all how to do the self-hosted method method. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, restart my PS4, and go back over to the computer. Alright, so now I'm going to be showing you all how you can do these self-hosted methods. So you need to go into your PS4 exploit host folder, find PS4 exploit host, right click, run it as administrator. The first time you ever run this, you might get a little window saying that you need to okay this on your firewall and you need to allow access. That is totally fine, just pick allow access. And another thing is too, if you're running into some other issues, like if this is not looking like this here, or you get to some into some other firewall issues, you might have to look them up and see, you know, how you can whitelist this on your computer, whatever it might be. Uh, I ran into a few issues here and there, and it was really, I just took whatever I was seeing, Googled it, and within a minute or two, I was sorted. So it's pretty easy to do, honestly. But this way, we're now going to host everything on our own PC. So the nice thing is we keep everything local and on top of that you can add in you know extra payloads that you want to you can do extra things you know inside of here whenever you need to do that um, really just have full access to this which is quite nice so that's why it's nice having this all available but what you need to do is you need to keep this running and every time you want to run a payload and essentially you want to jailbreak your ps4 you have to have this up and running so keep this running on your computer and we're going to go back over to our PS4. So now that the PS4 has been rebooted, check this out. You might come over to test app, try and run it, and it's going to give us an error. So as you can see, that's it. Cannot use the content and that is totally fine. So what you need to do for this is you need to go over to your settings, go to network, and now go to setup internet connection. Do the same thing as before, except not that we're going to do custom automatic do not specify but for manual instead of these external IPs you need to type in what it says for your DNS IP is it's going to say that on the exploit host tool so mine here is 192.168.1.253 and you only need to do that once the second one should either be the same or it should be 0000, 000, 000. So I'm just going to make it the same thing. So that's it, our primary and secondary DNS are both going to be pointed to our PC, which is hosting this. You can press next, automatic, do not use, test internet connection, success on IP, failed on internet connection, that is perfectly fine. Now what you need to do is press the PlayStation button, go over to your settings, user's guide, user's guide, and that's it. So as you can see, this is the same page except it is slightly different. We do not have Linux loader because that is not included on the local hosted one that I have right here. So again, blocker, dumper, FTP, and Mira. 
Just hit X on Mira. Press X on that, if an error comes up, and that's normally to be expected, and it will say you're all set. Press the PlayStation button, and as you can see, you can press this. I'm just going to say update later in regards to this. You might get those notifications there depending on what happens, but either way, you can see test application hello world. And that's working just fine. The other nice thing as well too with this is if you are pointing it directly to your computer, since it's not having any outward connections, like it's not hitting the actual internet, uh, you're not going to be able to risk downloading an update, which is quite nice as well. If you are getting errors like this, like update now, update later, and you're a little bit worried about that, what you can also do is just go back here, user's guide, here, and I'm just going to run the update blocker. And you can wait for this to come up. And I believe FTP is in here. So FTP S4 with update blocker 1.3. And then normally what I do for safe measure is I like to just restart the system. And that's about it. So there you go. That is how you can jailbreak your PS4 using either external DNS servers or a self-hosted method. Both of them have their positives and negatives. And that is also how you can install package files, which are games or applications as well too. Hopefully this video helped you all out. Just as a quick note as well too, if you are interested in other tutorials, the previous methods for making PS2 package files and installing them, as well as dumping and installing PS4 games work just fine on here. The same methods are fine, and on top of that, any games that you might have installed on an old jailbreak should work on here. That's PS2 and PS4 games. For any specific homebrew that's iffy, it's going to depend on who coded it and what it's been designed for, but PS2 and PS4 packages are just fine. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, a like would absolutely be appreciated, and if you hated it, a dislike is fine as well, too.